Okay, <clears throat> welcome back. This was a donated request by Intello. This is the president's featuring Louis C.K. We've covered for 17 minutes. I'm sure I turned it into a 40 minute video because I love to talk about presidents. And that is my foot rubbing on my chair. I don't have socks on and I, I, I wish I was wearing socks right now. I hate that. I hate the feeling of my foot touching my leg. Is that weird? Feels weird. Video. Oh. See, I I I said I was going to rewind and I didn't. So now I did. Okay. He's number three. That's O one to O nine. He was a two term guy. Adams was a Federalist. Washington was obviously independent. Jefferson was a Democratic Republican. He was the first Mr. Pre president. Right when he got in, the French and the British started going to war. So everybody in America was like, fuck England. Also, France just helped us. Yeah. Fuck England. The French Revolution happened during Link, uh, Lincoln's time, during Washington's time. And Washington had said, we're going to remain neutral. Same thing happened under Adams. The stuff was going on. But Jefferson declaring neutrality a lot of that had to do with the French sending that ambassador to the US on basically a sightseeing tour to get money and soldiers to help fight and Jefferson really felt like that was a stab in the back because this guy was like you know I'll get you thrown out of this country I'll get you impeached and Jefferson was like okay Let's join it. And he was, he was, oh, he loved one. the French. He loved the revolution in French. Yeah, he did. The, the Adams didn't because it was bloody and horrible. And he didn't like the French. He didn't. And, and, uh, and Jefferson loved the revolution and he loved, he had all these, his friends over there. He spent a lot of his life there. Yeah. But they started, Americans started being like, fuck England. Let's join France in the war. He was the only one with the foresight to be like, we have 40 guys in our military and three boats. Yeah. Let's shut the fuck up. Let's not. So he declared neutrality. And everybody called him a pussy. Then England started blocking his like fucking ships. I think he didn't. He he might have been the one who said we're just not going to trade with either of them. So then our so he put an embargo on trade. And let's say our export uh, revenue was. 158 million dollars that's i'm just throwing out a number the next year they made 13 million that's a dramatic loss for any kind of money so it came it, it came down to they yeah y yeah we we just can't we can't do this but jefferson didn't care because he was trying to stay neutral but madison reversed that but Thomas Jefferson is my least favorite president of all the presidents that I've visited or read about um, because of how backstabbing, conniving, and bitch-like he was. Um, I have a great story, and I will tell it on the next section. Not the next video, the next section. The, you know, no, the American see economy why. just plummeted. England started just saying, if you're not trading with us, we're just going to confiscate your ships, steal, kidnap all the sailors, make them join the British Navy. What? So he was getting punked by England. You're talking about Jefferson. Jefferson. Well, it's interesting because Adams, what ended his presidency was a fake rumor that Jefferson started, that Adams was trying to start a war with mm. the, and start a Navy and do all this stuff. And mm. it was all fake. But then it ended up kind of haunting Jefferson because yeah. the the truth of about all that ended up r fucking him a lot. Huh. I one thing interesting about Jefferson is because he's so famous for having had a slave and having and having had like fifty thousand slaves, yeah, mm. or whatever that not that many, mm. um, and having had children with his slave and. I don't think he ever even gave he her didn't freedom. Him. Didn't free. He didn't free the kids. He didn't free he didn't a couple. Free the kids, he freed a couple. Free freed two. Yeah. And the rest he kept enslaved until he died. And what was interesting about them? Damn, he did the ultimate because I said so. Is so <laughs> like that? Can I stop being a slave? He's like, no. I yeah. said no. <laughs> they were like white. Really, his slave children 
the woman he had the so yeah the woman i'll let him say it and then i'll jump in it's sally hemmings woman that he sally. had kids with sally yeah. was like half white okay so yeah let's get into this sally hemmings Thomas Jefferson's wife passed away. They had, I don't know how many kids together, I don't remember. Three? Seven, he had a couple daughters. Um, his wife passes away. Uh, and trying to figure out how to start this. Okay, so his wife passes away. Sally Hemings was like really young 13 14 15 and she was friends she was owned by like the daughter but that was like her play pal so jefferson goes to france the daughter comes with him sally hemmings comes a relationship starts then in france sally hemmings knowing that she could be free in france refuses to go home so a negotiation happens to where she comes back i think she probably negotiated that she wouldn't be a slave and that her children would be free so anyways sally hemmings was a slave but she was very light-skinned so sally hemmings mother was a slave who was owned by you got to follow this thomas jefferson's wife her dad had sex with that woman giving birth to sally hemmings sally hemmings was stepsisters with jefferson's wife they had features that were strikingly similar but the skin tone was clearly not the same Jefferson's wife dies. Jefferson starts a relationship with Sally Hemings. She's very young. And there you go. I don't even know how many kids he had with her. I've heard seven or eight. And I don't know. Or like was very light skinned. Yeah, I think her mother, because her mother was in his family for a long yes, time. And, and, and uh, also, the rule was if the if the woman was a slave her children were born into slavery they were slaves for life if that was irregardless of the man being a slave or being free if she was a slave her children were slaves now if she was free and the man was a slave or the man was free and she had kids those kids were free but they were only as free as they were allowed to be because they could easily they had to have an owner but they could be kidnapped and sold into slavery so you weren't really free. his dad was fucking that yes i mean it was like what but she was kind of a product of his father i'm not what? sure about that I, yeah, i'm yeah, not yeah, sure yeah. about that but it's <laughs> sally hemmings was a product of Thomas Jefferson's wife's father. That's who hooked up with the lady who gave birth to Sally Hemings, the stepsister of his wife. Sorry, cars. Some what an interesting Whoa. thing about him in terms of slavery <laughs> and American politics is that his first um, elected position was in the uh, Virginia legislature. He was like a, a, a House of Reps guy in virginia and the very first act he ever did first thing he ever did as a as a politician was to propose a bill in the virginia uh government uh to abolish slavery in the state of virginia mm. it's the first thing he did Whoa. of course it got shot down but it was his it was his desire and his dream yeah because he was big on that with the french revolution yes with and Lafayette the whole and, yeah yes and all of these guys all of these early guys wanted slavery out, but yeah. the, there was no way the South was going to do it. Yeah. And they wanted the Southern, um, because so the choice was to have 
like just two countries or four countries over here mm -hmm. or have a unified country and just deal with it. Yeah. We're going to have slavery, but create a framework yeah. where in the future, when it becomes possible, when things change, when things get more modern, we can that we can get rid of it in the future. And I could be wrong, but I think the North <clears throat> had abolished slavery early, like 1806, which is while Jefferson's in office. I could be wrong. I don't know. It was Canadian around the exact same know. time as England. In fact, maybe before oh, the, really? the North. We were right. Us Northerners, we got it right. A fun Jefferson story that I like is that when he was in Paris, he had this woman, a, a girlfriend, named Co something Causeway or something. His wife died when he was pretty young, mm. and she made him promise on her deathbed that he would never have another woman, which is a horrible thing to do. Yeah. He fuck, never did, man. young man that you're fucking... Yeah, it's like... Not yeah. even he stayed single. Been somebody to take help, take care of the kids they had. It's like, no, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, but he's, a, he's oh for sure. So <laughs> it was part of the reason that all of, including Sally Hemings, that his loves were all secret because he was ashamed of every woman that he loved after that. That's hot. And so there was a woman in in uh, uh, Paris. Was she was a British painter, and her husband. She was a woman. She was married, but she was a painter, and she fell in love with Thomas Jefferson, and they were very much in love with each other. But then the way they broke up was very funny to me because he was in, he wrote her these beautiful letters. And she was in love with him. He was in love with her. But then um, the French, when he was leaving France, they wanted a great portrait of him to put in the National Gallery. And they said to him, you can choose any painter in the world. And he was like, no, I want, you know, a real guy. <laughs> 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 and his girlfriend was like, why not me? And he's like, baby, come on. I mean, like, you're, good. You're, you're good. good, but you're not like you're not. fucking grown man. You're not like fucking, I'm not for history. True. These guys were his. That's the weirdest thing. How history mind. They were like knowing they were going to get they sucked knew, into dude. history, which is crazy to think yeah. about. So, um, real fast about Jefferson before he was telling this story. Uh, and Jefferson had, try to get slavery ended and the South was against it and blah blah blah, blah. Jefferson made a comment and this uh, drives me crazy but it, I understand it Jefferson said slavery was not uh, an issue for his generation to solve that was future generations his generation solved the crisis of the revolution the declaration of independence the government they they formed uh, from from a colony to an independent country and so he kicked the can the slavery can down the road for the next generation now had the next generation known that it was going to take a war they probably would have done a little bit more to make sure that it was solved before that happened but just like now the u.s is 33 trillion dollars in debt and all they talk about is tax cuts and da 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 and they kick the can down the road it, it's no one wants to deal with higher prices to pay back what previous generations all the way up to now have, have gotten away with. Everybody wants to kick the can down. Well, you can't keep doing that. It eventually has to be solved by people who are going to make it tough by making cuts or making it tough to live on. But you can't keep ignoring it. So here's a good one because we got to speed up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he goes over. So Napoleon's in there mm -hmm. in France. Yeah. It's post revolution. This is the this is the Louisiana Purchase. They sent James Monroe over. That was his bro. Mm -hmm. He goes to France. They thought they were negotiating the sale of just the port of New Orleans. This is all thanks in part to the fucking Haitian Revolution, which fucked France. Look into the Haitian Revolution. Yeah. It rules. They were looking at buying uh, the the port of Louis of uh, Louisiana, no, not Louisiana, New Orleans, because it was a strategic stronghold on the Mississippi, and they were wanting to buy it for ten million dollars. Uh, he gets over there. Monroe finds out. Oh, they're trying to sell all of the Louisiana. Like, it's from it's from New Orleans to the Rockies to yeah. Canada. It's what? huge. From the Appalachians to the Rockies, basically. And uh, they didn't have time to consult Congress. So Thomas Jefferson just bought it on the spot, yeah. which he was like, I abused the fuck out of my power. And he was that was his whole thing is government should have no power. Yeah. He, was 
he he purchased the the Louisiana purchase big swath of land that might have eight to ten states that ended up coming from it Illinois being one of them and instead of buying one little port in a city for ten million dollars he bought a giant area of land eight to ten states comes from it now for fifteen million dollars and James Monroe had to negotiate it by saying, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Yep. I think that's an exact quote. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 we'll do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason was, if he were to write a letter and send it, that's going to take how long? Three weeks? Five weeks? Now Jefferson gets it. The letter James Monroe writes is, they want to sell us the Louisiana Purchase, big swath of land, which they didn't even know what it was. They weren't even sure. They were they're going to sell us this big chunk of land for $15 million. Okay? Now, imagine if Jefferson wrote back, well, how big is this land? Tell me about it. Dude, just say yes or no, man. I ain't got another three to five weeks to wait. So, James and Monroe was just like, yep, we'll take it. Exactly what we came here for. Yep, that's it. You didn't have time to negotiate. Is against any. Federal... Well, that's what Jefferson's whole life was like: doing fucked up things and then saying nobody should be able to like <laughs> yeah. slavery. He's like people that need to stop having slavery. He's fucking a slave, and it's like somebody's yeah. got to stop this. We got to stop this. That's yeah, somebody's got to stop that. this. Somebody's got to stop fucking these. Slaves. Yeah. Well, Louisiana. I wish it could be me. He's got six kids. But I need to fuck this one right now. <laughs> yeah. Those arguments must have been crazy. Dude. All right. The. Uh... But yeah, that was big because that secured the Southern Port. And, then we and, had, yeah. and Monroe was Monroe. Secretary of State. Monroe, yeah. And then wasn't he the... Ne um, no, 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 Madison. Madison's Madison, next. Because usually the Secretary of State would end up being pre yeah. president. Vice president at this point. Although, who was it? Was Jefferson Adams? Jefferson was Adams as vice president. Yeah. So that's three straight, or two straight vice presidents. Then we got James. Jefferson's first vice president because he did two terms. His first vice first his first vice president was Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr did not get on the second card because Aaron Burr had a duel with Alexander Hamilton, killed him in New Jersey. Then everyone called him a murderer. And then Aaron Burr might have been close to doing some treasonous stuff. I don't know the more I think about it I don't think he's as guilty as everything because there's there's too much evidence that points to him not being involved he was trying to potentially overthrow the government and um, take over like the southern areas and then start a whole new country James Madison he was a dork Yes. He was a huge dork. He was a, the, a nerd. He was a frail, didn't... nervous, think Gerbys. What? He was yeah. Gerbys. Real? Uh, Madison had seizures a lot. He, but this is sick. So basically he had the first, they said his lady was the first first lady, Dolly what? Madison. That was like really like, they would have parties at the White House. They would like try to get. And also he was Jefferson's mentor. He was another guy like Adams who was there all the time. Yeah. He was like a worker. He kept shit going, mm -hmm. and it's, he would write Jefferson and say in, in in France and go, "Can you fucking come home and be yeah. president?" <laughs> and Jefferson would write back and go, "I am just enjoying Paris, yeah. and I don't want to do it." <laughs> okay, here's what I said earlier about James Madison or about uh, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was in the cabinet. James Madison in Washington's cabinet. Madison was not. Washington needed somebody who was loyal, who would work for him, and James Madison was a worker. Bill of Rights, um, the, Const the Constitution, these are things that were important to him. So, sorry. So about Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson had a problem with Alexander Hamilton and he used to just talk shit about him and then say that Washington was senile and he was listening to him da, da, da. James Madison had kind of a, a good relationship with Hamilton because they wrote Federalist papers together not actually side by side but they both wrote them for the common cause Jefferson convinced Madison that Alexander Hamilton was destroying the country 
Jefferson, Madison, and James Monroe, Presidents 3, 4, and 5, spoiler, were all gentlemen farmers, slave owners, plantation people. They all technically lived about a, a half hour's drive away from one another. Now, back then, horse and carriage was about an eight-hour drive. Um, but they all lived near each other. So, they all joined in together to write horrible things about Washington. Did the same thing about um, Adams. And they Jefferson was just a puppet master. Okay? That's what I dislike about him. Shit talk you behind your back to the media. But when confronted, oh, no, no, I, I would never. He was, he, he never wanted to be a part of any of those types of things. But that's, that's who he was. So, Jefferson has a problem. He says something to Madison. Madison, Pitbull, writes articles. James Monroe kind of did the same thing, but not on a scale. Madison was his pit bull, his defender, talking about Jefferson's, went hard for him. Jefferson becomes president. Madison is, is in his cabinet. Madison still did the same thing. Wrote letters, but he never wrote it and put his own name on it. None of them did. They put other people's names on there. Madison was a go hard for him about how great Jefferson was and how crappy you were because you didn't agree and blah, 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 blah. Then, James Madison gets elected. He gets into office. Things aren't going well. He sees the economy's hurting. So he rescinds the order that Jefferson had, which was the um, embargo against trade because it was hurting the, the country. He starts seeing, James Madison starts seeing letters talking about how terrible he is to have removed the greatest president ever, Thomas Jefferson's order of embargo. Madison's kind of looking at this and he's just like, hmm, a lot of these, you know, these five articles here, all written by different people, supposedly, they're all very similar in style. So Madison turns to Jefferson and says, could you defend me and, and write an article for me? And Jefferson goes, I'm retired. And it's like, it's now 18, 10, 11, 12. He has been in Jefferson's Corner since 1791. 20 years. He has been ride or die for, for Thomas Jefferson. And now the first time he needs him, Jefferson's like... And Madison was really taken back. So Madison leaves office. He's upset with Jefferson. A little strained relationship. Jefferson, Madison retires and starts to review papers. And he starts to put pieces together. That the person who was attacking him was the person that he thought was his friend. And... Jefferson ends up dying on 4th of July, 1826. Same as uh, uh, James... John Adams. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson both die 4th of July. People start writing about how great of a president, best president ever, Thomas Jefferson was. James Madison puts his name on the paper and starts telling everyone how they're wrong. The greatest president was, was George Washington. And he goes hard to defend Washington. And I think at the end of his life, he realized that for 20-some years, he had been lied to. He couldn't exactly go and ask Alexander Hamilton if that was true, because Hamilton was killed in 1801 or 1802, 1803, maybe even 1804. I don't even remember now. Could have been 1804. Couldn't even talk to him about it. Couldn't talk to anybody. And so Madison, at the end of his life, realized that he had been lied to by the person that he had put so much faith in. And it's like, it's a, it's, you know, 
How would you feel if you're in that situation? You know what I mean? That's and then he would float in and just take the fucking big job. And yeah, Madison gets four years and people are like, dude, you're boring. <laughs> no, America Mad- has no, never Madison, liked nerds. Madison gets two. Don't because. touch me. Don't touch me. Don't ever put your fucking hands on me. I can't touch me. your Don't shoes ever put out your of respect. Fucking hands on me. I'm gonna grip you up. God damn it. Hold on. <laughs> so Jefferson Jefferson was to shut the fuck up, guys. <laughs> shut up, guys. Sean, get out. <laughs> Sean, don't look at me. So Madison takes some of the flack because everybody was calling Jefferson a pussy for not fighting England. So he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. What? So America just declares war on England. He nerdery. Okay. Madison opened tr- uh, talks with England and France to stop stealing ships and, and impressing sailors into their military. And France was kind of like, okay, yeah, we won't do it. And then they might have still done it. I don't remember. It was Napoleon. Not exactly the most honorable of people but england looked at it in the standpoint of all right look we're already dealing with france (laughs) fine we'll we will stop we will we will do something that we normally don't do and that is we will honor an agreement with a weaker country in the united states and we won't do any of this stuff that we've done unfortunately that letter didn't get back to james madison in time and so he declared war on England. By the time England got it, England was like, what? And then, I think it was around that time that old Waterloo happens, Napoleon gets beat, and I think James Madden kind of, James Madden? James Madison kind of did one of these. England and France's wars over? Hmm. Do they know that we've declared... They do know that we've declared war on them. Hmm. We're in so much trouble. And that was pretty much, I think, word for word, how the whole discussion went. He nerd raged on England. England immediately marches down and burns Washington, D.C. down. <laughs> they burnt the White House immediately. Yep. He spaz cried. But, but every, yeah, he spaz cries. He's like, nobody's going to call me gay. But then I, everybody always acts like we lost 1812 just because they burned that shitty White House. Yeah. So First off, Washington, D.C. was a swamp. It was literally a swamp. It was a shithole. No one lived there. Uh, War of 1812, we fucked England up. It was more of a draw, but um, Mobile Bay, um, the biggest um, ship battle in the Western Hemisphere, still to this day, took place in the in took place in Mobile Bay. Um, that was, I guess, more of an American victory, but I truthfully, I don't remember. Um, but everyone's going to turn to, you know, Americans, what we know, and that is the battle of new Orleans under Andrew Jackson. Technically the war was over, but people didn't know that. And William Henry Harrison went after and, uh, had killed Tecumseh, the native American warrior. Uh, I did a video on him on the channel completely respect him immensely um he could have been in a different time tecumseh could have been uh, probably uh, one of the greatest leader warriors unfortunately he came around at a time when america had a foothold Fort McHenry, Star Spangled Banner, all that shit. 
Battle of oh. New Orleans, we smashed them. Battle dude. of New Orleans was, uh, what's his name? Jackson. Fucking Jackson. Yeah. And Jackson, they were fighting the Battle of New Orleans. The war had been already over mm -hmm. for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, the war was already <laughs> settled. Oh, yeah, they fought the it treaty was, was signed. Yeah, the Treaty of Ghent had already been signed. It was in January of And uh, he was still fighting. Yeah. What? Well, you get to Jackson, he's fucking he's incredible. He's wild. Incredible. Right. So, first Trump. He was the first Trump. Yep. First. So all of a sudden, America, that's our first war as a country. Yeah. So now America well, also, is not before just that, Because England was just taking pot shots. England would just park a ship uh, outside of like, uh, you know, a, a Baltimore or whatever. They're and so just start good. heaving fucking fireballs <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. Like, dickheads. you know, yeah. where, do you know Hudson, New York? It's a town yeah. in, on the Hudson. It has a weird maritime feeling to it. It looks like Nantucket. And that's because it's all people from Nantucket. It used to be this little whaling village in Nantucket. And in the 1810s, the British would just park a ship and just set houses on fire <laughs> for fucking fun. What? So all the people that lived in that town found a they founded Hudson. And I don't know how accurate that story is, but it's funny. And they would go out and whale in the ocean, and then they'd drag a whale up the Hudson River. Holy shit. And they would slaughter it and then send it down the river. It was a great way to send whale meat and oil down to here, New, New York, York City. Yeah. And that established a hub in New York, uh, an upper New York State. Hudson became a very big, important. And oh. that's where you ever heard of a guy named Legs Diamond? Because Diamond, yeah. Diamond Street was like the first whore street. It sounded like. Hudson became a place for farmers mm -hmm. to bring their herds and get laid and get, you know, just fuck and Whoa. gamble and, and have their animals slaughtered and brought down here on boats. And then they so go they home. Got paid damn yeah, yeah. anyway so, so we'll that's skip. what was going on that's how much things like just the english uh, one english ship lobbing fireballs changes a ton oh, of things yeah. Yeah, some and they finally needed sucks. it to stop yeah. <laughs> resulting yeah. in some guy getting ahead like, <laughs> yeah. i'm never gonna be able to face me wife <laughs> me wife so okay so yeah so now you got now we're kind of so unified that was the first time madison the madison war of 1812 it was a draw. I mean, they signed a treaty after two years. Nothing and changed, though. Just nothing the, changed. The English stopped harassing us. Yeah, though, I but do we declared war. They came over. Yeah. We kind of fucked them up, though. I looked at the casualty numbers. It was like double. That doesn't really? matter in the historical story. Of course, wars, of course. But I always, everybody die. always acts like... Because they got over here and they all died of disease kind of immediately. Like, yeah. They got fucked up. It was hard to... And they were like, this, we, we can't afford to fight this while we're fighting the French. Truce. Uh, that brings us to Monroe. Monroe. As I said, the battle with France was already over. Monroe was kind of the man. I want to double check something. And that means you're going to double check this with me. When was the Battle of Waterloo? 1811. The Battle of Waterloo start date is June 18th, 1815. Okay. When did the U.S. declare war on England, 1812? According to Senate.gov, on June 17th, 1812. Okay, so June 17th, 1812. Waterloo's 1815. Treaty of Ghent. According to Wikipedia, the Treaty of Ghent was the peace... When was the Treaty of Ghent signed? December 24th, 1814. According to National Archives, a meeting. Hmm. 1814. Battle of New Orleans. According to Wikipedia, the Battle of New Orleans was fought on January 8th, 1815. Between okay. the. Yep. So they're. So they're pretty much just like, okay war for both of them and of course England can't be fighting I mean they could fight all over the world but you can't keep fighting all over the world Monroe was the last founding father to be a president fought in the Revolutionary War was uh, James James Monroe what's funny about him he was the last founder to be a president he also was the last guy to wear those little stockings and wear like a little the little hat little hairdo the taupe, toupee basically with like the, the white wig that's the word he was 
he he did all that the buckles in the shoes because that's that was what they did but the times and and attire had changed james monroe was also shot in the neck during the revolutionary war and severed an artery and he lived he's also depicted if you've ever seen the painting of washington i think it's crossing the delaware and he's standing there just like all stoic you see a white guy behind him holding the american flag that is james monroe being depicted in there because james monroe did uh was involved in that crossing but also there's a black guy in that boat right next to james monroe and that is the depiction of um billy lee william lee who was uh washington's um uh, right hand man slash servant that valley forge he came up with the monroe doctrine which is neutrality we got the americas nobody yeah anybody coming over into the western hemisphere um you're going to try to um, colonize somewhere you're going to try to start a war with someone you the monroe doctrine was anyone from europe or any of that you come into the western hemisphere and you try to do anything that's an automatic declaration of war against the united states and so that was how it was treated this is our hemisphere you have yours it's awful bold fuck with us because they were all worried Europe was going to Spain or Europe was going to come back and take Well, South that was America. all the source of all our problems was these other fucking European countries yeah. being involved in their wars. So he was the first guy to go. Yeah, we're never going to go get want. involved in their wars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's... Also, side note, the Monroe Doctrine was written by his... By James Monroe's... What the hell was he? Anyways, the Monroe Doctrine was written by John Quincy Adams. Most of it. So that's kind of what they were saying was that's like the most lasting policies of any of the founding fathers was like American neutrality. Europe, you can have your wars. We're staying the fuck out. Yeah. Obviously, it lasted 100 years. Okay. Um, added Florida. Monroe got Florida from the Spanish. Nice. So the reason that happened, though, was because of Jackson, because Jackson was taking his troops to Florida and Monroe was sending a guy on a you know, horse. Or, I don't know if they had telegrams <laughs> yet, but it was it'd take him eight days to say, leave Florida alone. We're trying to negotiate yeah. a, um, a price. But finally, Monroe decided we don't want Florida anymore. They're asking this. The Span Spanish owned it. We, they, we can't afford to buy it. I can't justify it. I'm not going to get it through Congress. And Jackson was writing back and saying, I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take it militarily. I'm going to. So Jackson was chasing a bunch of, there was a slave uprising and a bunch of them went into Florida, which was Spanish Florida. Also, some of the native Americans would come from Florida into the American colonies, start, uh, you know, a, a sneak attack and then flee back to Spanish Florida where they were protected. And of course the Spanish weren't, the Spanish were kind of watching all this and they were like, wink, wink, we know what you're doing. You're fine. They weren't stopping it from happening. Jackson decided he was going to go in and he was going to stop it from happening. And so he went after these slaves that went and went hit at a fort and he just bombarded the fort. There were a couple British guys that were at one of these forts and I don't remember maybe it was Spanish guys anyways he basically wrote a letter to you know the authorities and basically said he was going to um, issue capital punishment for these two people because they're in charge of this fort and from this fort there have been sneak attacks from natives and um, slaves have run away and hid here and they were fighting us so you are going to be punished just like them and England or Spain whoever it was wrote a letter back basically like you better not like what do you think you're doing you know you don't do that you're in sovereign territory what do you do 
But on Jackson's note, as he wrote this note, at the very, you know, he was basically saying, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, blah, 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 blah. And at the very end of the note, he put, P.S., the two gentlemen were hanged at 1 p.m., something like that. So even as his letter went out, there was no saving it. They were already dead. Jackson was a... Attack them. And Monroe said, no, <laughs> you may not. I'm the president. You may <laughs> not do that. And Jackson just ignored him. <laughs> and started attacking and he did it. What? He took Florida, and then he showed up in D.C. and was like, right? That was good, right? And Monroe's like, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, he's like, but also I bought it. Good job. Yeah, also I think he we paid, paid for it. We paid for it, and it was a while, mess. While Jackson what? was while Jackson was like fucking with them, the Spanish were like, to Monroe, they were like, yeah, you can buy it. Basically, they sold it like you would, knowing that they were going to lose it. So, would you rather it be lost and then potentially lead to a war where now you're losing more money, you're losing the lives of people, you're losing ships? They basically just complained, and Monroe sold it, or uh, Monroe bought it. They got something out of it so they could say, hey, look, we got money, we, we don't care. It was a way for everyone to save face, even Monroe, because Jackson was not one to control and killed him. <laughs> yeah, he was down fighting them, and he was like, "Yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna but sell it." There's two generals that did that. Him and MacArthur did that too. Just did shit without permission. Yeah, and then showed up and said, "Right, Mr. President, wasn't that the plan that was all along?" Good. And he was like, "Yes, it was the plan all along. Whatever you want, whatever Whoa. you want." So you got that. But this is interesting because Monroe was the first part that. Uh, this is where the slavery issue starts to take mm -hmm. real issue because it was the Missouri Compromise. So Missouri was becoming a state. It was another slave state pro-slavery yeah so every so just he, so every time they added a slave state they'd have to add they a, had free to add a free free oh, one to really? make sure it was balanced yeah so that's when we added maine missouri got to be a slave state that's it for him hmm. john quincy adams yeah so john quincy okay we're gonna stupid mouse we're gonna go back just right to there yep okay look uh, I do apologize for all the pauses and adding things, but I love talking presidents, so that is what it is. It's going to happen. The next video will go right to the end of uh, Andrew Jackson. Martin Van Buren, total nerd. Hmm. Okay. There's a thanks button on the channel. You can donate. Any donation helps. Um, you don't have to. Sorry. There. I feel like it keeps... But then I do this, and then I feel like it's just my head. Sorry. Okay. You can subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you can um, give a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. And... Uh, Outside of that, I'm just going to go ahead and end this and say have a good day, have a good night.